Welcome to this Eon Fusion tutorial on visualizers. This tutorial assumes that you have already completed the overview, data structure, and data flow tutorials. We begin by looking at an open scene view in Eon Fusion. The scene itself is shown here at the right of screen, with the slider at the lower right. The scene contents pane is here at the left of the scene view. Navigation in the scene is performed using the mouse wheel, as you have already seen in the overview tutorial. Please refer to that tutorial if you are unfamiliar with navigation in scenes. The scene contents pane here at the left is where visualizers are created and organized. It shows the data set that has been input to the scene view object in the data flow. Looking at the data flow view that contains this scene view, we can see that there are three pipes entering the scene view object. Back here in the scene contents pane, we can see that these three groups correspond to the three pipes that enter the scene object. As you have seen in the data structure tutorial, each of these groups contains attribute groups. In the bathymetry vector set, for example, there are attribute groups for 0D points, 2D surfaces, and for the vertices. Visualizers can be attached to any of the non-vertex attribute groups. In simple terms, a visualizer is a visual interpretation of the data, just like a graph. The data enter the scene in their raw numeric or text form, and a visualizer provides the visual interpretation. The appearance of the visual interpretation depends on the type of visualizer that is applied to the data, as well as the rules applied within the visualizer itself. Let's look at the visualizers in this scene as examples of some of the different types of visualizer. The 0D points in the bathymetry vector set have a visualizer attached to them. This is a 0D vector or point visualizer, and it corresponds to the yellow spheres that are visible in the scene. The visualizer is toggled between visible and invisible by clicking on the visibility toggle here at the left of the visualizer. There is also a 2D surface attribute group corresponding to the bathymetric surface. This attribute group has two visualizers attached to it. First of all, we have a digital elevation model with an aerial photograph draped on it. Toggling that visualizer off reveals the next 2D surface visualizer, which is coloured by depth. This means that the colour of the surface is determined by rules that are based on the value of the depth attribute. The GPS track vector set contains a set of 0D points that define a vessel track. These are also shown as yellow spheres in the scene. This vector set also contains a 1D lines attribute group which has a visualizer attached. Again, you can see the effect of toggling the visualizer on and off. Finally, there is an image visualizer attached to the original aerial photo raster set. Toggling this visualizer on, we can see that this is a visualizer for the geo-referenced aerial photo. The photo is not draped on the bathymetry in this case. Visualizers are added to an attribute group by right-clicking the attribute group and choosing the required type of visualizer from the context menu. You can see in this case that there are two types of visualizer available for a 0D points attribute group. Refer to the Eon Fusion manual for a full list of available visualizers for each type of attribute group. Visualizer properties are accessed by right clicking the visualizer and choosing properties from the context menu. The top part of the properties dialog box contains properties that are universal for the majority of visualizers. You can name the visualizer using the object name setting. The scene axis mapping settings provide a means for either correcting or overriding the scene's default mapping of vertex attributes to axes. You should be familiar with axis mapping and usage having seen the metadata video tutorial. Alignment between the first and last columns is an important check to perform if you need to troubleshoot a visualizer. If the scene axes aren't matched with the relevant vertex attributes, then the visualizer will not display correctly, if at all. The lower portion of the visualizer properties window is where rule sets are specified. While the visualizer type determines the way that the data are interpreted, rule sets are used to define the specific features of the visualization. 
For this bathymetry points example, the 0D points visualizer interprets the data as spheres. However, those spheres have a radius, a color, and a surrounding halo. The values of these parameters are determined by rule sets. Zooming in on the scene view, we can examine the effect of changing some of the rules in this visualizer. First we will look at the radius rule. This is a universal rule that gives all of the spheres a radius of 2 metres. By modifying the rule to specify a radius of 4 metres, we can see that the spheres are resized accordingly. Similarly for colour, we have a universal rule specifying that all spheres should be coloured yellow. One option is to change the colour as shown. Apart from these universal rules, another option is to specify a rule set that will colour the points according to the value of one of their attributes. For the existing universal rule, there is no need to have an attribute specified in the attribute text field. Clicking here opens the data structure selector for the purpose of choosing an attribute. For this example, we will choose to colour the points based on their Z attribute. So we choose the Z attribute from the data structure selector. Once an attribute is selected, we have the option to classify the data into intervals using these classification settings. In this case, the classification examines a random subset of 1000 samples. It produces three equally spaced classes for the Z attribute. We can then specify a rule for each of these classes. For this example, we will colour the lower third of the spheres red. The middle third will transition from red through to yellow. And the upper third of the spheres will be coloured yellow. Zooming out and looking at the full point set, we can see the effect of this rule in the scene. Any attribute within the attribute group can be used to set colour rules in this way. And likewise, the radius of the spheres can be set according to the value of an attribute. The final rule set for 0D points is the halo rule set. These can be seen as semi-transparent spheroids surrounding the solid spheres. There are two options for specifying the size of the halo. One of these is the simple halo where the halo has the same size in all directions. A simple halo will appear as a sphere, as long as the vertical exaggeration of the scene is 1. A second of these is the XYZ halo, which allows specification of the size independently for each scene axis direction. Tripling the halo size in the X direction has the effect that you can see in the scene. As with the rule sets for radius and colour, the rules for halo size can be universal or they can be set based on the value of an attribute. Halos are therefore very useful for visualising error or uncertainty attributes for point data. We will now look at the two visualisers that are attached to the 2D surfaces attribute group in the bathymetry vectors dataset. Looking first at the properties for the digital elevation model with aerial photo, we can see that the colour rule set is set to its default value. The important rule set for this visualiser is the image rule set, which specifies the image that is draped onto the surface. We can see here in the raster text field that a raster set has been chosen, and here in the colour model field that a colour model has been specified as standard red, green and blue multiband image. There are various options for the colour model to accommodate some of the various different image encoding models. In this case, because the image is multiband, there are separate rule sets for the red, green and blue bands. These rule sets work in the same way as the colour rule set that we saw previously, except that the default settings are designed to work with standard image formats. In this case, the image requires no colour adjustment, and so the default settings have been used. An alternative surface visualisation option is shown in this second visualiser, 
the digital elevation model colored by depth. Looking at its properties, we can see that the color tab contains the rules that specify the surface color based on the values of the Z vertex attribute. On the image tab, no raster set is specified as we would expect. Note that the visibility of individual rules can be toggled on and off in the same way as a visualizer. We will now create a new rule here from minus three to zero meters. You can see first of all that the other rules update automatically to accommodate the new rule. Applying the new rule shows its effect and if we turn off the visibility of the new rule, the corresponding data disappears from view. If we toggle the DEM with aerial photo back on, you can see that it obscures the DEM coloured by depth. However, the colour by depth visualiser can be made to display on top by moving it to the top of the visualiser list. This is done by dragging it using the left mouse button. We can now see the colored by depth visualizer on top, but the aerial photo visualizer can be seen through the holes in the colored by depth visualizer. This has been a brief example of the use of visibility of specific rules and the ordering of visualizers to mix visualization layers together. As a general troubleshooting tip, each visualizer offers a zoom to extents option. Choosing Zoom to Extents will zoom the scene view so that it includes the full extents of the visualizer. The Zoom to Extents option is also available in the scene view from the context menu from a visualized object itself. There is also a Scene Level Zoom to Extents option which is available from the Scene Backgrounds context menu. It zooms the view to include all the data that is in the scene. This has been just an example of the various visualizers and rule set options that are available in Eon Fusion. Refer to the Eon Fusion manual for a more detailed listing of the visualizers that are available. We hope that this tutorial has been a useful introduction to visualizers in Eon Fusion. Please check the Eon Fusion manual if you require further information or post a question to our support forum. Thank you.